What's up YouTube? This is another video write-up for the challenge Assembly 2 in the reverse engineering category of Pico CTF 2018. So the challenge prompt here is what does ASM2 with these arguments return? Submit the flag as a hexadecimal value, etc. We've kind of seen this thing before. So we're given some source code. Let's go ahead and copy it, download it, and I'll just w get it into the current directory here. Looks like we have it there. I'm going to open it up in Sublime Text. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this and I'm going to change the syntax highlighting to assembly. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new script that will kind of recreate this in Python. So let's do like recreation.py or something or whatever we particularly want. I use the file header plugin for Sublime Text to get that boilerplate stuff uh, at the very top there. But okay, what we do is analyzing the assembly. Let's say this is function prolog. I'll keep zooming out. Hopefully you can still see function prolog. And then we set EAX to the second argument, 0xc, right? Because EBP plus 4 on the stack is just going to be our return address, I believe. Uh, EBP plus 0x8 will be the first argument. 0x plus xc is the second argument. Again, incrementing by 4 because that's the size of the data type there. Let's just include this as a comment so we know that EAX will equal the second argument, 0x21. So let's say Python can do that as well. And let's do the next line where we're setting EBP minus 0x4. So a local variable set to EAX, which we know to be 0x21 still. And let's just say that can be EAX in the Python code. We'll do the same for the next argument. So EAX can equal just the first argument and we give it 0x8. And just using, not, not, not using this because that's the same value here, but using it because it's the first argument that we're passing this function. Uh, EBP or the base pointer plus 0x8. So once we set EAX, we'll do the exact same thing just as we did previously with a new local variable. We can say EBP minus 08 will be equal to equal 0x8 in this case. And we'll do that just as we did earlier in Python. Set it equal to EAX. But before we do that, we have to set EAX to equal this. So that's just creating these local variables for us in our stack or from the stack in the very start of the function. And then we jump to part B. So go to part B. So part B, what it's doing is it's testing as a compare statement here or compare instruction and less than or equal to. So let's do if EBP plus 0x8, so our argument here, We actually don't have a variable for that yet, so let's go ahead and create one. Because underscores are going to be minus in this case. So let's do minus here and minus. So now we can have EBP minus, or plus, sorry, for arguments. That can go ahead and equal the first argument that we give it, second argument that we give it. And in fact, we could have just be setting these here rather than using the hard-coded values. Okay, so now let's test if EBP plus 0x8 is less than or equal to this value. If it is, we are jumping to part A. Otherwise, we are setting EAX to equal EBP minus 0x4, and then we will just print out EAX to see what it is we actually need here. Because that's the end of the function, right? There's our function epilogue down at the very bottom. Okay, so part A we need to actually look at now. What it's doing is it's setting EBP minus 0x4, so that local variable, and it's adding 1 to it, so plus equals. So part A will take EBP minus 0x4, plus equals 1, and then EBP plus 0x8 
will also be added with a 0x a9. So it's just incrementing. It's, it looks like it's trying to do some kind of loop. It looks like it's trying to do some kind of division, I think, because it's testing, okay, whether it's a factor this however many times, blah, blah, blah. But since our Python code should be able to handle it just fine, let's go ahead and run it. After we set ebp plus 0x8 plus equals 0x a9. So when I run this, we get 8. Okay. Let's see what we look like here. Is EBP correctly being set here? Uh, it looks like if we try and debug this here, no, it's not. So something is wrong in our code. We are, let's check out what EBP minus 0x4 is. 33. And that should be 0x21, so that works just fine for us. Now we do the same thing with minus 0x8 for local variable. And that's 8, just as we would expect. So now we're checking if EBP plus 0x8, which we know is 8, is less than or equal to this thing. So let's print in the loop. Okay, that only happens once, so that must be why. Of course, it has to go back to part B once part A is done. We just didn't have that procedural loop in there. So we can do a while one here. Actually, just to loop it, because we know that that's just going to return back to that other part B test. So once we print EAX, or once we actually have that else be returned true, let's print EAX and then return. So now will break, actually, because we're not inside of a function. So we'll stop looping. So we have 120 as our final answer. Okay, let's see what that is in hex. Run this, 0x78. Perfect. Sounds like a plausible answer. Let's go ahead and submit it. And we got it right. Okay, cool. So all that we really did there was recreated this assembly code in Python. So it's something we can easily kind of understand and manage. We step through it just with our comments on the side and we just try to recreate something that we can run very easily. Uh, maybe we could do this with NASM if you just wanted to compile it and run it. If you are that much of an assembly guy, sweet, more power to you. Uh, but I just figured, okay, I'll step through it and try to understand it a little bit. Uh, the while one thing or the loop is interesting. Remember, because we immediately jump to part B and then if it's less than or equal to A, which for the first couple iterations we know it is, it'll move up here. And then after it runs through each of these commands, it continues back into part B because it's assembly is spaghetti code, right? So you just dial back into it. Okay. So before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I cannot say this enough. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. Just kind of get your name up in lights here or just kind of add to this list. And maybe it's a warm, fuzzy feeling inside that you're just helping helping another bro out. So thank you. $5 a month on Patreon will give you early access to all of my videos before I release them on YouTube. I'll put them in a shared Google Drive folder and you'll be able to access them before they get uploaded on a scheduled kind of gradual release cycle on YouTube. YouTube. Um, I need to get better at actually releasing and preparing some content in advance. Um, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'm always grateful for your support. So if you're willing to do that, thank you so much. If you did like this video, please do a like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server. Link in the description It is a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. Uh, you can hang out with me and a lot of other super smart people, much smarter than me. Uh, and hey, I love you guys. I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, thanks. Hope to see you on Patreon. Later.